าอ Hello everyone good evening happy to have you with us Elena I have lost you on the screen I'm still here Ah, oh, there you are. Okay, very good. <laughs> Got you back. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're going to leave a few minutes for everyone to join us. Feel free to put in comments or hellos in the chat box, and you will notice that um, you do not have your microphones are all muted. So we ask that during the uh, webinar, put any comments you might have or questions, or if you're having any technical difficulties into the chat box, that's my job is to be watching that and monitoring that throughout the webinar tonight. I'll leave just a little minute here, <coughs> excuse me, for uh, everyone to come into the room. I hope everyone has started the new year well, and I wish you all every success and bundles and bundles of happiness for the year to come. Here in France, I get to say that up until the 31st of January. After that, it's taboo to say Happy New Year. <laughs> okay, uh, so I think I'm going to go ahead and start. And that way we will be really, really on time and on schedule. And our webinar tonight is being recorded and it will be available on the CPAR Europa YouTube channel in a few days. Uh, this is our first webinar of the year. So thank you all really, really for being here. We're very happy about it. Let me tell Elena, there are currently 46 participants. We are here for the webinar Level Up Digital Games as an Effective Medium of Intercultural Skills Acquisition. And it's Dr. Elena Slakov Chuk speaking to us from Valencia, Spain today. Uh, I'm going to turn things right over to uh, Elena, who has got, because I've had a chance to kind of warm up with her a little bit and she's got some really fun things in store for us so elena i give the floor to you thank you linda and good evening everyone uh, my name is elena and um, i would like to take a moment to congratulate you with a happy new year and uh, also i would like to take a moment to say thank you to hitario road for having been given this opportunity to speak in front of you and thank you all for coming I hope that you hear me well and see me well. And I would like to start this um, webinar with showing you um, a 10 second um, clip. So basically what you saw here is, is a line, yeah, you all see line here, and this is a, a clip from a massively multiplayer online role-playing game called World of Warcraft, and what you see here is uh, actually fellow players, these are uh, actual uh, players in, uh, and, the, and the protagonists uh, in, in, in virtual world, and what they're doing, they're queuing. To, to be able to start the quest. And uh, uh, this uh, game is so popular that sometimes people need to queue even twice. First, they need to queue to get into the server and to log into the game. And then in, within the game, they are waiting to be able to play. 
And uh, I know that it might sound uh, fantastic. Why would somebody queue uh, to play the game and in the game? But uh, that's how video games work. They just make you feel engaged, entertained, competitive, skill-driven, inspired, and you really want to be inside. And uh, uh, and moreover, they, they, they teach you a lot. For example, this game, uh, World of Warcraft, has a proven history of, uh, uh, of teaching players cooperation, collaboration, communication, team building, English language, and leadership. So basically, if you would like um, your students and your clients to queue for your teaching services today, you're in a very right um, place. Today, I'm going to teach you how to introduce video games into, into your teaching practices. And uh, um, let, me, um, let me briefly tell you what uh, we're going to do today. Um, uh, I will tell you uh, why digital games-based learning is uh, such a big deal now and why you should really have a look at this. Uh, then uh, I would like to share with you a little bit about uh, how effective is digital games based learning for intercultural communication. Uh, then I would happily uh, share with you some, um, well, happily share, you probably happily share some solutions to some obstacles that usually educators complain about when they're trying to introduce video games in their teaching practices. Then I will happily share with you some titles, uh, so you don't need to do this search, I did it for you the titles that you could use immediately in your in your teaching and um, at the end I, uh, I will tell you we will speak about a little bit of digital games based learning pedagogy and um, this is our agenda for today and uh, my best hope for today is that if uh, you feel like the digital games based learning and teaching is a monster like this for you uh, I hope that at the end of this webinar, I will give you some tips, some, some, some advice, some ideas, so you would feel at least that you are equal and that you are uh, equipped, you know, to fight this, uh, this monster. And uh, uh, of course, I would like to know uh, who you are, who are this, uh, we are 57 people, and I would like to know who you are and what are your hope for today. And uh, I would appreciate if you could uh, kindly relate yourself to uh, one of these personalities. For example, I would like to know if we have digital games based uh, learning and teaching cracks here. Uh, it's basically people who, or educators who use the live stream, virtual reality, podcasting, video blogging, gamification, telegram channeling, that you already use video games. Uh, in your teaching and probably you come here you, you know to, to see how other educators do this or you're looking for some peers or maybe you would like to know uh, more about intercultural games uh, then i wonder if you have uh, among us digital games based learning and teaching enthusiasts it's uh, basically uh, lifelong learners uh, and teachers who uh, want to be on the age of educational technologies and come here for inspiration, for maybe some titles, for some advice, for some tips, and of course to join uh, the like-minded people. Uh, then I really wonder if we have uh, uh, digital games-based learning and teaching newbies. It's uh, people who are absolutely new to, uh, to game-based learning and digital games-based learning and teaching world, but uh, they hear the buzz, they see that something is going on in this world and they would love to, to know more about this and to see if uh, video games are for them. And uh, of course, I, I, I would like to know if we have a uh, polar beer uh, around us here. It's people who still uh, would say would prefer classical way of, uh, of teaching, but uh, they would like to see what is going on out there with educational technology. So uh, Linda, could you please put a pool? Yes, hello everybody. So here you have with the four categories that Elena has already shown you and we're asking you to fill in. Well now wait until. Ooh, somebody voted twice, no? It's true, nothing says you can't. I'm just if you're unsure. I think. Are we ready? Any, has everybody voted? And so, I'm going to put an end to it. And here are the results for everyone. You see them also, Elena? 
Yes, I do. I do. So we have cracks among, among us. That's great because I thought that most of the cracks are now playing video games or designing them. So I, 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 would, I, I welcome you here. Then we have enthusiasts, but most of, the, of you are new this, uh, and we have polar bears. <laughs> okay, so I hope that I would uh, satisfy the, the interest from, from all of you. Uh, so shall we start? And uh, um, hmm. Yeah, I would like to start with our first level and I would like to tell you a little bit what is going on in video games based learning world and uh, uh, I want to show you uh, um, this number global market value for video, for video games you can see 180 billion uh, dollars and I wonder if you could name me in chart another industry that are growing uh, with such uh, with such a pace and here I put you um, a graph so you could see that uh, the difference between other entertainment you could compare uh, entertainment industries music and film and you see, and you could see uh, let's say till 2005 nothing showed that video games would be booming and actually when we speak about the 2004 and 2005 this were the awful years for video game industry because the image was uh, like the worst uh, impossible to imagine there were so many articles saying that video games provoke violence aggression disorders uh, obesity and all the things but suddenly uh, not suddenly but uh, uh, the population uh, who were playing video games were still growing and at some point researchers say okay maybe uh, video games are not so bad and uh, uh, um, industry developers decided okay maybe we should expand our uh, our genres and not only uh, show uh, for example uh, produce uh, first five shooters and uh, that's how more more uh, variety of video games come to the market and uh, basically in 2005 six seven uh, video uh, serious video games so educational video games start appealing and now you could see that there is <laughs> no stop of growing for this industry and uh, on the next slide um, i put here some um, some demographic uh, information so you could see how many people are involved in video game playing and basically to some uh, like that so you could see better and to sum up this slide uh, just imagine that you're in the room in, in the room with three people in it and regardless regardless of their race sex nationality and age statistically one of them is a gamer and basically video gaming now is a way, a way of life and i put here uh, some for me uh, mind-blowing uh, information uh, about video games and uh, um, and uh, I would really uh, let me see if I could point this uh, some I would really uh, point your attention to this information that Grants and Actor 5 made 800 million on the first day of sale of this game and uh, please remember this information because I will get back to this game later then as you can see uh, some games are so loved that for example when producers a lack of money to produce them they just go on kickstarter and say we, we need money to produce a, a next uh, a series and the one hour and a half and you have two million for production needs then uh, i hope that well i assume that you have heard something about fortnite it's, it's now one of the most played uh, uh, video game in the world and as you can see, it, is, it was mentioned uh, 200 times as a reason for the wars in UK in 2018. We are waiting for the statistic for 2019. Then uh, also uh, information that really well surprised me and not surprised me that 36% of gamers would absolutely tomorrow quit their job as if they could support themselves as professional video gamers and uh, on. Uh, you can see that being professional in this i mean being professional for example video video game blogger you could earn up to 10 million per year and this is uh, just a fresh uh, statistic from the top 20 uh, game uh, game video game bloggers from youtube from twitch from steam and uh, I, i'm not even speaking about e-games which is totally different story and uh, where you can earn even more and the video games are so now <laughs> persuasive that uh, a game designer she was speaking in 2018 on the World Economic 
forum in front of all um, world leaders. And she was saying about video games, about persu uh, she is a designer of persuasive and serious video games. And she was saying how, how big this world is and what is the potential uh, of video games for education, for example. And basically, uh, every time that you would read why video games work so well, uh, uh, you would read uh, uh, about the, the things that video games uh, are very safe environment for, for, for learning because uh, if uh, you fail to do something, uh, the, the, um, I would say the, uh, the, the cost of failure is zero because if something doesn't work, you just restart the game or choose another character and you could do it again. And uh, uh, anything, uh, any objective that you need to do to 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 reach any quest you need to solve uh you you do it by actually by doing and you can repeat and you know that repetition is very good for learning and uh, what else is here is that you really your attention is very focused on that so uh learning by doing is what we educators we all want and this is so naturally is in, in built in video games and of course video games give you instant feedback because you can't progress without Seeing uh, how are you doing? Uh, what is your score? What is the which level you are? What skills you need to gain? Or what uh, basically with whom you need to make an alliance to go on? Uh, and it's, uh, video gamers receive like hints and guidance uh, in order to proceed, and they receive it just in the moment when they need it. Uh, and of course, it's all trend system thinking. And what I really really like about video games is the participation is voluntary, right? Uh, and uh, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, educational industry couldn't, you know, not to see all this. And uh, uh, another number that I would like to share with you is that, for example, five-year compound annual growth for game-based learning products is 20%. And uh, I'm sure that uh, all of you know the, uh, the, uh, the website uh, Kahoot. And you could see that uh, it's the fast-growing learning brand with 75-year-over-year growth rate. And if you know any other uh, business that is growing so 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 fast, please put it in chat. Uh, then uh, Steam is, um, I would say, this is the biggest hub who release video games, and every day 25. A new video games uh, are uploaded into this uh, in, in this website, and if you would uh, uh, choose the category education, you would see 600 educational games. I mean, or serious games, you would find at least 600 games in different categories like mathematics, science, STEAM, art, uh, humanitarian, social science, language learning, and if you would uh, put stimulation tag, you see the number, you will see almost 14 a uh, thousand games and of course um, such big uh, um, games like Minecraft, Civilization, Assassin's Creed among others, I, I, I'm sure that you heard uh, about these games, they now want to um, to widen their audience and they offer educational uh, options uh, for, for, for in their games and uh, um, when we speak about well, we, we researchers who, who 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 work in the field of game-based studies, when we speak uh, with with the players, uh, you can see that 75% of them believe that video games provide mental st uh, stimulation and education, and 92% uh, indicate that they would be more productive in their work or slash study if uh, the experience were uh, more game-like. And the uh, uh, World Health Organization. Uh, on um, the next slide, what I want to show you is that uh, last year they uh, released uh, a test, and uh, Linda will now put this, the link to the test uh, in uh, in the chat, uh, where you could uh, test how addicted you are to video games. And here I put a um, oh <laughs> I put an applause because I was very happy, you know, and emotional to see these uh, dimensions of. Uh, <laughs> Of, of the test and just uh, uh, the, 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 the results I put from their website, it's publicly aware, so you could see that even World Health Organization now uh, sees that the video games could be used for skill development and this is, could be one of the motivations why people want to play. I mean, most of us would think that people do this for escaping, for, uh, to escape or for recreation, to have just fun, but for example, when uh, we speak to uh, female gamers, they would say that they're interested in uh, acquiring skills and this is even now recognized by World Health Organization. And I think um, 
uh, at this point, <laughs> we all realize how big video games world uh, are and is. And uh, uh, I want to show you a little bit of uh, how effective video games are for intercultural communication field. And uh, um, Elena, tell me. If there's just, I have one question that I think it might be interesting for you to answer now. Since we were, since you're talking about like the effectiveness of games for uh, digital games for learning, so we have someone who asked, "How is learning defined in uh, digital game learning? Are participants demonstrating the application of their learning outside in the non-virtual world?" Correct, and basically it is done by by test. Well, by any research methods that we know. Uh, for example, when we speak about that big entertainment games, uh, for example, I myself last year made a 200 uh, uh, question years open ended, and we were asking, how do you think? What do you learn from video games? And uh, for my huge surprise, they were naming this old soft skills. Of course, they never put the word soft skills, but they would say, oh, I learned how to team, uh, to build uh, teams because I'm, I'm now, I'm leading uh, a team of people because many games, especially massive multiplayer, to succeed, to proceed, you need to have a, a team and basically you need to build it. So you need to have a criteria whom you will include in this team. And if you play uh, this game for many, many hours, you have your criteria and, and they would say, oh, I'm now a recognized leader. Or for example, when you do the quest, you need to find solutions. So people would say, oh, now I'm very good in system thinking. Or for example, the, uh, with the English language, people would say, now I'm, 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 I'm better with English because most of the game, like most of the game, all of them, first, the, the first language of release is English. So people playing and talking and chatting with the people acquire language uh, very quickly in this way. Uh, does it make sense what I'm saying? I, I can't see the chat. Uh, I don't have any reaction right now. Does anybody have a reaction to that? Elena, I'd like to ask you to speak just a little bit more slowly. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I prepared so many slides for you guys, so you know, <laughs> I'm afraid that one hour will be not enough and I'm all the time, you know. Yeah, yeah, no very long. good. <laughs> and so you have, you have, I have answers, they say, absolutely makes sense, okay? Yes, but uh, now what I want to tell you, uh, um, uh, go, go on answering to this question. Uh, uh, I made myself several systematic reviews of recent research of impacted learning outcomes of video games on players and from the uh, point of view of intercultural uh, perspective, because I'm interculturalist with 10 years uh, uh, of experience. So uh, if you would like to know more about research, just uh, you can go to my um, research game page and the, or you, you can drop me a line and I will send you the, the research. And uh, uh, what I figure out doing my systematic review of recent research that uh, from the intercultural perspective, uh, we can expect uh, four main uh, impact and learning outcomes. First of all, it's language acquisition. That's what I was saying. So people would say that they learn language. They would say that um, they learn about themselves because somebody would say, I didn't know that I'm so competitive or I didn't know that I can uh, can uh, uh, can uh, uh, think so strategically. Then what people say is that they acquire cultural knowledge because, for example, there are several <coughs> several video game producers in the world and one of them in Asia. And for example, people who are exposed to playing uh, games from that part of the world would say, oh my God, I learned so, so, so many things about Japanese culture, even some language. Uh, or and 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 it was and it works vice versa. Uh, then uh, people would say that uh, their perceptions of some things are changing, like uh, depending which games they play. Uh, researchers find that it is possible to uh, to have an increase in racial biases or decrease in racial biases. Uh, the same uh, would happen with stereotypical cultural associations. Uh, what also researchers find out that uh, playing empathy games or persuasive games, there is a category of games that's uh, called like that, people would, uh, would, uh, would feel more empathy for refugees and uh, sometimes it would even uh, want to, uh, you know, to, 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 to help them in real, in real life. Uh, another outcome I would like to tell is about content understanding and basically uh, most of the research, I mean like early research on that was done on content analysis of video games and uh, um, 
speaking about content understanding, what I mean is this, uh, the, the players gain a deep uh, meaning of the content. So uh, they, try, they kind of like understand uh, what, what goes beyond the surface of the, for example, racial pre representation or gender representation. And uh, uh, basically, if you want to start to do something with video games, that's what you can do. Just start asking questions. Uh, who are the main heroes? Are they white? Uh, or are they of, uh, of, other, uh, of other race, uh, other women, uh, what they do, who are their enemies. And basically people would say that, for example, Muslims and Arabs would be most of the time enemies and uh, targets for elimination. Uh, minority groups would have uh, uh, a certain uh, roles, for example, if it is a nation, uh, they call them visible people in video game world because m most of them would just uh, practice martial arts and uh, do strange sounds and movements and would never help to anyone. Uh, when we would speak about, uh, for example, black people, they would be mostly in, uh, in, um, in sport games uh, or uh, in some <laughs> criminal. Uh, but there is a very famous game. The opening scene of this game is a black guy sitting on the back of the police car. So uh, the, the, the story starts this way. So we have a criminal who is black and then the story st starts. Uh, also, people understand that uh, there is a absolutely wild hero and wild privilege. So being white uh, is privileged. And uh, um, uh, well, th this is start changing little by little, but still. Uh, and another outcome that, for example, give me a little, uh, not a little, but a lot of hope is behavioral changes, uh, change because researchers say that if you play like right games, <laughs> Oh, uh, you could uh, expect that people would do prosocial behavior and there are some nice experiments proving that, for example, if you play Superman uh, uh, and uh, Joker, after playing Superman, you would behave. They, they did, uh, researchers did some, uh, some, some experiments, very simple one, and people show uh, prosocial behavior uh, who played Superman than those who played Joker, for example. Uh, what also is now uh, is under... Um, and then the investigation is that uh, playing, uh, for example, persuasive games, uh, people after that take some actions in real life. And by taking actions in real life, what I, what I would say is that if people uh, play some game with refugees, after that they might want to donate uh, some, something to refugee camps, they might would go and work as a volunteer there. But of course, it's like it's very, very new, I would say, and the research is ongoing. And, but basically, yeah, if you want to know uh, about this more, uh, I have several articles published on that and they're all available on, on ResearchGate. And uh, um, now I would like to talk to you and to ask you basically what stopped you. Uh, why, uh, I saw that most of you here are newbies. So my question is what stops you from, from, from employing video games in your practice? Why you still haven't tried this? And uh, um, I assume that one of your answers could be that you don't have enough technical resources, or you might say that the administration of your schools of universities don't give you a good, give you necessary support, or maybe you don't have parent support when you work, for example, with younger children, parents are against video games, or you might say that even students' involvement is not that high as you might expect, especially if you work with digital immigrants, um, that maybe you don't know <laughs> You don't have enough expertise and knowledge in digital game based learning and teaching, or maybe your obstacle is timing because we are all uh, the, the lessons, uh, the lesson time is, uh, is limited, obviously, or the training program time is limited. And when we speak about like uh, um, really big uh, video games, they would require a lot of hours um, to play, or maybe like uh, something that stops you is cost of video games because of course we have some video games that are for free, but really good video games uh, they they would involve some 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 cost. Then maybe <laughs> as we saw we have some polar bear again uh, among us, so you are not into educational technologies at all. Uh, another obstacle could be that uh, you need to have uh, at the end of the academic year, you need to pass the test of how to integrate video games and how to evaluate them. Uh, maybe you just didn't have opportunities on that. Maybe you were not sure about the effectiveness of video games as a teaching tool. Maybe uh, you work with people who are, whose not native language is English. 
or you don't know even where to find uh, quality video games or not quality video games or proper video games or you are not sure if there are teacher ready resources and you don't have a time desire and energy to develop all that resources uh, from the scratch or maybe you're not sure about software and hardware uh, you need to 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 to, <laughs> to to use video games in your in your practice and your teaching practice or maybe there is something different and uh, i would ask you now kindly could you please type in the chat what stops you uh, what like couple of your first uh, first like obstacles that come to your mind why you're still not using video games okay everybody the list is a little bit um a little bit long but i have posted it in the chat box for you to be able to look over the uh the, these different things and tell us give us feedback on and i will try very hard to read your messages in between time elena i have um is there any data on intercultural competency development based on such things as the idi in other words in are there digital games that have been kind of based on something like the idi or another tool to measure intercultural competency I will later speak about some titles okay. I prepare for you like 25 plus titles that I personally use and that have a very good okay. result. I think Great. I will I will answer partially the questions later. Okay, perfect because there's another one about examples. So then we're right there. Yeah, yeah, I, I will be telling you. Uh-huh. Okay, that. let me see what I have. People are saying knowledge and teacher ready resources. I'm assuming that that means something that you can kind of take off the shelf and with a limited amount of preparation be still Correct. using it and more time to more time in courses to incorporate video games uh two people not enough experience so knowledge knowing more and uh knowing knowing more and knowing how probably i have again teacher ready resources and the time that it takes to evaluate material is uh often a lot of time that teachers don't have okay and we have hang on let me come back here so yeah more knowledge yes yeah, same thing we're on the same thing more knowledge teacher ready resources and not enough experience, let me see. How to use it in business with other standard tools and the limited time that you have. This is on corporate in the business world rather than educational situation, okay? Um, because in a one day training, where can you fit in these kinds of things? Very good question and I will address it like on the okay. next slide, yeah. Okay. And here's someone who actually thought the digital games were boring. Okay. And we we're back to not enough technical know-how and not enough knowledge of the actual games. Okay. And not enough time to test them out. Okay. Mm -hmm. so you have an idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Quality oh, games, finding quality games. So that I know that Elena, you're going to um you're going to be talking about yeah, that later yeah. this evening and it would be great to have a playbook on how to implement them in other words how to insert them in your program and not enough intercultural tutors okay oh and here we have co2 and digital pollution <laughs> really okay which is a question for some people and I think we're turning around in the same things. Let me see just one thing. Yeah, more knowledge. So I think that oh, you need to be playful as a person. Well. <laughs> and someone says games rarely come with learning outcomes. Okay. So, or maybe learning outcomes rather rarely come with games. I would, that's me putting my two cents worth in. Okay. Okay. I, I, I limits, the limits on interpersonal contact 
okay? Um, and I'm going to say that that's probably good for now. Okay, so. And do remember to speak slowly. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm really, I know really, you have so much you want to do. But, but we need to, in order for us to, to take it in, we have to be able to capture it, okay? <laughs> I'm trying really hard, believe me. My natural. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And it's because I'm speaking in English in my native language. I speak even even quicker. Oh gosh! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm truly trying to control myself. So I put like that um, that uh, that you mentioned that knowledge and digital games based learning and teaching. And what I can say here is that more and more books and tutorials and videos are are, are, are coming with, with that. And I'm working hard on that. I will launch a book at the end of the spring on that on digital game based learning and teaching and how to do it like uh, step by step uh, timing uh, yes and of course the, the easiest way to implement video games is when you have a course or several like uh, 20 hours 40 hours whatever courses it's a little bit more complicated when it is uh, for example a classical nine to five one day program but i will address it a little bit later and of course ready teacher uh, ready teacher ready resources and materials uh, um, they do exist for some video games, especially if video games come uh, and attack serious game or persuasive game. The, 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 um, the, the producers, the developers, they would do some recommendations uh, for that. So, uh, but of course, well, it's a, uh, I will give you some examples for a bit later uh, and where to find quality games. In this case, I prepare for you 25 plus games, so I, I can be your source for now. But uh, what I can say is that everything that you say, uh, for, for example, from where I put this, uh, this um, what you have on the screen, I'm just reading a lot of, uh, um, as a pro-academic, as, as someone from academia, I have to read a lot of, of a lot of research, a lot of surveys, and I talk a lot of to, 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 to teachers when I deliver game, digital games-based learning and training, uh, trainers for trainers. That's basically what people complain all the time. So you're not alone, everybody's <laughs> having the same issues, but what I can say is that it's all uh, could be solved. Uh, all issues that you have, uh, uh, there is a solution for that. And I will try to give you some solutions <laughs> uh, on our next level, uh, speaking about the titles. And the first, uh, I, I divide myself games into, I would say, three categories. And the first category is uh, five minute games or warm up digital games. Um, what I want to tell you here is that, uh, um, of course, uh, just, just last week I was talking to somebody who is in charge of that classical nine to five uh, intercultural training in business settings and the person asked me Lena could you recommend me a couple of games that we could start testing or uh, just could implement uh, in in that training for for example for middle and uh, up uh, management and uh, um, I start thinking because uh, I will be super honest here, most of the research that exists uh, in the field of digital games based learning and teaching are done, uh, uh, is done in, in the educational settings for obvious reasons, right? But uh, when we speak about simulation, simulations, uh, there are some researchers that say that simulations work and they work pretty well. And uh, for example, um, I put here uh, a game that would take, uh, I, I put here some games that would take you to, to play like not more than five, ten, ten minutes. And uh, I assume that uh, some of you tried already um, Inclusion Monster that is done by um, Culture Wizard uh, website. It's not really a game, it's kind of like gamify content, but uh, this type of game would fit pretty well in business context. Uh, another game that I would say it's who, who am I, it's called Guess My Race or Don't Guess My Race. Uh, this tool was created, it's also not a game, it's kind of a gamified also tool that was created especially for business pur purpose uh, to speak about the race, about self-identity, about uh, stereotypical thinking and how to avoid it. So basically, if you don't know, check it, it's an app. And uh, the one that I really, really like is, um, is this one. It's um, it's uh, 
parable of polygons. It, it's also kind of like gamified version of how to speak about diversity and inclusion in a playful way. I would really recommend it. I think that I overuse this tool. And Linda, could you please put the name of this game in chat so people could see and check them? Um, and then uh, the game that I really, really uh, love is uh, my cotton picking day. This one, this game would would cost you to play, like would take you to play like one minute, maybe two. It's so boring, it's so simple. But the message of this game is so uh, powerful that when the game is over, you could so easily start the conversation about human rights, about labor rights, about uh, how different working conditions help people in the third world. Um, then uh, the games that I like, for example, and they use it uh, in my uh, youth and children uh, intercultural trainings. And this one is an immigration nation. It's a very simple game um, that would teach you uh, why would uh, what are the um, ways uh, to, to 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 immigrate to another country. What are the legal ways and the legal ways? And basically, you just give this game and. In 10 minutes, uh, they would tell you by themselves. So you don't need even to explain. The game is so uh, like self-learning by, by, by its mechanics and by, by its message. I also love Carmen San Diego. And uh, for example, if you teach about uh, London, Nairobi, Tokyo, Sims, uh, it's, uh, you, you play a detective. And uh, using Google, uh, Google Earth tools, you see uh, the world. So it's also very easy to introduce in, 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 in any training. And basically, I would recommend it's not uh, games, but the Google Earth has several very nice tools for, for, for intercultural education. And uh, I'm a big fan of this game, um, uh, which is called uh, Against All Odd. Uh, this game is not uh, available anymore. Like. I don't know, but starting from this year, I can't find it anywhere. I mean, where I used to find it, it's not there anymore. So I assume or they uh, update it or they uh, change it, uh, but uh, you still can find trailers, you still can find walkthroughs. And what is I like about this game, it comes with uh, with a manual of, of, I don't know, 50, 70 pages of all possible um, games and activities uh, to do and as you see this game is divided in three and basically this is an official it used to be an official game of international uh, in the united nations for refugee and migrant education and this game is divided into like uh, how you when you flew, flee from the country uh, then when you're in the refugee camp and then how you establish a new life in your country so uh it's very rich with already uh, made material. So basically, if you, you can use another game, but you could still refer to the activities that are there and the activities for this game, uh, still, they're still download, downloadable. If you can find it, just drop me a line and I will, I, I will share, I do have them. Can you, can you give the name again, specifically the name of the game? Which one? The last one? This one? The one you were just talking about, Helena. Uh, it's called Against All Odds. And if you go on uh, United Nations uh, uh, website for refugee issues, you, you, you would have it there. I mean, you, you can't play it now because I don't know, <laughs> uh, but all the materials are there. Uh, then another category of games, uh, I would say 30 to 45 minutes or one class <laughs> digital games. Uh, what I mean here is uh, um, this game that uh, would take you like a lesson or half lesson or maybe the whole lesson to play like up to one hour and uh, um, I will be honest this uh, games that you would that would require more time than that uh, but even playing like for half an hour you would uh, uh, you would receive a lot of uh, you, you could uh, elicit a lot of information from this game to develop further on and uh, for example, uh, Peacemaker, it's, uh, it's a very famous game uh, for perspective change. And this is a game that is very well studied. It has a lot of research uh, on that. And uh, the first people play as Israelis and they play as, uh, as Palestini. And all the research says that people playing this game, of course, this game can't solve the problem, but uh, it helps to change the perspective, absolutely. Uh, then we are Chicago. It's a game of uh, how teenagers, what life uh, teenagers would expect when they live in, uh, in um, I would say, not, uh, well, <laughs> how to say it politically correct, in the, in the neighborhood, uh, I would say dangerous neighborhood. Uh, 
uh, uh, then the game that I personally adore is Paper Please, is this one. Uh, it was an international hit, it was done, it's an indie game, it's done for only but by, by one person. But this game uh, happened to be a huge success, and here you play an immigrant uh, officer who needs to decide if you let people into the country or not. So basically it's also, you know, a good starting point for a lot of discussions. Uh, and again, uh, to develop criteria, how, well, basically it's, <laughs> you can use this game, it's unlimited, just limited to your imagination. Um, another game that I like, it's uh, 80 Days Around the World, which has a very, very beautiful world um, inside of it. And if you want to learn about the culture, that is, that is a place. Uh, the game Survival, I also love it. And this is a game also, uh, official game uh, done by United Nations. Uh, they hired a Spanish uh, game development uh, company to do this game, and uh, it's so symbolic, it's so complete. Every level, every level has uh, um, different game mechanics, so you could be, so you could never be bored. I'm so like upset that this game is so. Uh, it's not commonly used because usually uh, they don't have a marketing uh, um, in the in the studios, the small studios. They don't have a marketing budget, so people don't know about this game. But what I like, especially about this game, it's again is about a small uh, small child who is an immigrant who who needs to you know to to make his way to Europe. And what I like about this game is that it's very linear. That you get you can't jump the levels. That you need to pass all the levels to be able to get to 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 your safe place. Um, and it's very symbolic, the beautiful world, the beautiful dialects, and it, uh, the game was done with the help of real uh, refugee children. Another game that I really love is Journey. It's, uh, for example, when you want to teach, uh, teach a, a non-verbal communication uh, topic, this is the best game because there is not a single word in this game. It's only music, only sounds beautiful uh very very beautiful uh, world inside and uh, it's teach people you know how to to how to to see the world without words basically how to react how how to survive how to do things and uh, really i would say the game which is kind of a small phenomenon it is done by um by canadian company and this is one of the like best probably examples how uh how uh how uh, game producers celebrate uh, Mexican and Southwestern culture. Uh, they are so, you know, ac 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 accurately uh, represent all that small cultural nuances, all the jokes, all the environment, how, how people are dressed. So basically I would also recommend this game, you know, to, 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 especially if you teach something on Mexican and South, uh, Southern culture. Uh, then, um, then there's another category of games which, which are called many hours digital games. And here I put the titles that all of them cost money because they are they're never meant to be for educational purposes. Uh, they are meant to be for entertainment and fun, but uh, it happened to be that they have a lot of education uh, under that and uh, all these uh, games, they are not new. So basically there is a story uh, behind of them, I mean, successful story of implementation in, uh, in educational settings. And uh, for example, real life, um, it's, uh, it's co they call themselves as a real life simulator. Uh, they prepared more than 250 different uh, countries. And basically you choose the, the country you, were, you, you, you would like to be born. And then you go through all last, life past that could be uh, if you were born there and some uh, and some life are very short it could be like that you're born and you immediately died because for example and there will be a message saying that um, the children birth uh, death rate in this country is very high so you're dead and especially when you play the whole class uh, everybody would have different stories so then you could have a really rich discussions about you know how was your life in that country in that country uh, then another game that has never been to be educational, but it's simulator European track, and this is one of the best rated games from from the last year. Uh, you, you you play there as a track driver, but the environment is so beautiful. The the develop the developers really do like all European countries, like so the 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 the, the environment, the nature, the streets, the people, all that. So I could recommend this game. 
another one, uh, for example, the drawing become human. It's a powerful game if you want to work with empathy because here you play as uh, as a robot who wants to become human, and all and, and all the way you meet all that biases and prejudice and stereotype about you not being uh, human. And uh, what I like about this game because it costs money. And for, for those who don't have budget, there is all walkthrough on YouTube. So basically, you can watch this uh, this game. I'm not playing, but just watching other person playing. And this you, this is how you could use it. Uh, another game that I would recommend is Team Four. Um, I'm not a fan of this game, but what I like about it is that on the moment of creation, the characters, this game did just. <laughs> An amazing thing, uh, you could be anyone. Uh, they created uh, characters that could be of any ethnicity, any body type, any sexuality, any gender. So the characters are very inclusive. However, when you play, it's a little bit like idealistic situation, but on the way of creating characters, it, 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 it's a good one. Then I'm really on. And while I'm speaking, you can, you can just check this game, the trailer of this game on YouTube, and you will see that uh, at the first sight, it has nothing to do with intercultural communication because you will be somewhere in medieval uh, period of time. You will see knights, you will see dragons, you will see mountains, you will see witchers. So what it has to do with it, uh, educa uh, intercultural education. But this game was tested with an educational course. Uh, and uh, it happened to be uh, that you are in a such um, a different environment and you need to, to understand uh, who are your friends, how, how to communicate, what works, what doesn't work. And students who play this game, they then uh, uh, reported that they learned a lot about navigating unknown environments. Basically, that's what people do when they move to, to different cultures. Um, civilization is just a classic, starting from Civilization 4, uh, and they have educational, uh, educational mode in it. And uh, starting from a civilization four culture play a crucial, crucial, crucial uh, component to, to survive your civilization. So your civilization is, is, not, con uh, is not conquered by another one. EverQuest game uh, also, uh, you could see how with whom you make an alliances, with whom you don't. And even the description, what I like about this game, it's even the descriptions of, for example, uh, heroes and the tribes are so stereotypical. Um, and uh, probably uh, my favorite game on this list, Grand Theft After Five. And remember, I told you that this game earned almost a billion dollars on the first day of its release. And why I'm speaking about this uh, game, because uh, this game is uh, uh, provoked such a huge debate in the internet about uh, uh, violent treatment of women. Of, uh, of ethnic minorities, of LGBT community. There is so much hate in this game. There is so much killing. It's, <laughs> you can drive uh, drunk. You can kill, uh, you can have sex with a prostitute who will be Asian or Latin woman and kill her and you will get points. So this is such a bad game like uh, from our intercultural point of view. So basically you could use this as a manual how not to do. And uh, there is a rumor that uh, basically the Rockstar, um, uh, the, the, the company who produces Rockstar uh, games, they paid even for negative reviews on the press to generate, um, to generate, uh, you know, a buzz about it. And, and uh, I'm going to interrupt just to give you a time check. We okay. have about 10 minutes left. Okay? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I will be quick. Uh, then another category of games for, the, for those of you who work with migration and with, with immigrants and with the immigration context. It's just, um, mm, I, I took this picture from one uh, psychological uh, journal um, article I was reading last year. And then as you see, they recommend for uh, post-traumatic syndrome, they recommend virtual reality exposure. And uh, um, there is a big uh, explanation why it works. And one of that, that people, when they go through that traumatic experience again and again, it, it, it's not that traumatic. But what I see from my experience is that it's also this game could serve as a role model because, for example, I marked this game, Pass Out, Bury Me, My Love, Isalam. Uh, these games were done based on the real person stories. So, uh, for example, um, the guy who developed Pass Out is now he's a refugee from Syria who makes his um, way through Turkey. And now he's in Austria and now he's doing the second, uh, um, second uh, game. 
of that and uh, I love even the trailer in the trailer he say guys don't get me killed and uh, there are a lot of games where you get points for killing people and in this game you need to do the opposite stuff then bury me my love was done by uh, was inspired by uh, uh, a French uh, produ video game production company they read the story in, in the mondo in uh, if I pronounce my French, it's not, I don't speak French, but the one, uh, El Mondo, I think, the, 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 the newspapers and they, read, and, they wrote, and they read an article about Dana, who was a refugee, and uh, they reached her and say, can we make a game uh, based on your experience? And Dana served as a consultant uh, for this game, and uh, Salam, this game is not still available, but there is a trailer, and the developer of this game was in all the most famous journals in the world because his story is uh, just incredible. He was born in a refugee camp and now he is the CEO of the video game, I'm sorry, video game producing company. So basically this game could serve as a role model for future, for the next generation of refugees to see that yes, you can reestablish your life and you can, you know, you can succeed. Also, I would recommend another, My Life is a Refugee, it's, um, it's an app, official game of the United Nations. Home Behind is a very good game, and uh, this is a BBC project, uh, Syrian Journey. Uh, well, you can imagine it's like it's called uh, uh, interactive journalism, but it's a, it's a really nice game to play. So um, now I would like to go down to digital game-based ped pedagogy, and here um, what I want to tell you is that uh, when you choose a game, and if you're all newbies, so I would really would like to recommend you to start with uh, with this, like ch choose the game, what game you would like to try. And uh, uh, you could do it like, for example, if you don't want to play, you can see the trailers, you can see walkthroughs, you can see other people playing. And then when you choose the game, uh, then you could see uh, if you have, for example, uh, all necessary software and hardware to play it in your class. Uh, because if you don't, you could still use, you know, YouTube uh, and walkthroughs. And uh, speaking about integration, um, as you all newbie, I can guarantee you when you will be uh, playing this game or even watching this game, you will have ideas because uh, how to integrate uh, this video game even without me now giving you some tips. And I remember more, uh, some of you say that you don't have uh, knowledge how to integrate it into your practice. But um, I did quite a few uh, trainers, training of trainers on digital games based uh, learning and teaching. and. Uh, all the time when, when, when the game was chosen, people would say, oh, uh, I, I can do this or I can do that because you know your students and you know what resources you have. Uh, but basically here I prepared for you several ideas. For example, you could all the time um, do pre-playing activities. It's like uh, you could see trailers, you could see um, what press say about this video games. You could check the characters, you could check the story and you could, you know, develop uh, on that, then, for example, in class play, play uh, there is a mistake that many people think that they need, uh, for example, the one who say we don't have resources, we don't have laptops, we don't have computers, but there is a um, wrong understanding that each student should have a device. Uh, you could group people, you could uh, project uh, one is playing, and you project it on the monitor. You could uh, see this as a movie using walkthroughs. And uh, you could, for example, ask them to play at home. And in class, you could just play, for example, uh, in, in case of time problem, uh, at limited time, you could just replay some small, uh, small, the most relative, uh, the most uh, uh, relevant to this class moment. Uh, and, but of course, uh, what I want to say, and this is very important, that uh, video games, um, just playing for playing, they will learn not anything after playing you need to scaffold and you to debrief and you need to see what they really learn. So it's all the time good to have a, um, a discussion after that. Uh, what were your feelings? What, what, what were the most uh, things that, that, that you, you know, would do differently? What you saw the results of your, of your, um, of your decisions, uh, how it is related to the, to the real world and all the things, yeah? And uh, two very powerful things, for example, for polar bear who don't want to use video games in, uh, in, uh, in their class, you could do flip learning. You could just ask them to play uh, at home and you could ask them to play as a reward or as punishment or as doing something different. 
um, and then in the class you could do something that is called re reimagining project. For example, you could ask them to make a story, to make a story with different endings. You could ask them to make a poem. You could ask them uh, to do a drama. You could ask them to create uh, uh, something like totally different. Uh, another very popular thing is cosplay, for example, fast fiction. Uh, cosplay when people uh, put uh, clothes and uh, makeup of their favorite uh, uh, of their favorite video game um, video game heroes and they come you know and play if if they were they and of course uh, you can ask them to do all that uh, uh, homework like googling uh, who is the producer of this game uh, what is the story because some games have a very very interesting story behind them, behind them like really <laughs> really very interesting uh, who is the producer who is the hero who uh, why they choose this game mechanics uh, who is the target audience uh, what story would you do so basically it's all limited to your uh, imagination but uh, um, i put here <laughs> celebrate so when you choose integrate and evaluate your game i recommend all the time celebrate because uh, well what i mean celebrate is sharing because there is a lot of uh, um, interest in this topic and i don't know if you see there is a, a line that they put um, let, let me see if you could see it again uh, yeah play test revise and repeat 100 times this is basically how how, how it works because this is such a new tool so uh, yeah, we need to play and test and, and revise again. And basically, yeah, time, time was very pressing. So I think this is the, the end of my presentation. So this, I put the slide game over, but of course it's not over. Uh, if you have questions, you have like, you can find me on LinkedIn and ResearchGate. I started Instagram and uh, I'm launching two books soon. So if, and now I'm testing them. So if you want to receive some parts for, for, a, for, a, for a feedback, uh please drop me a line and we could do that and yeah i think we have a couple of minutes linda for for questions or we don't uh, linda yes just um i have launched for everyone the poll for the evaluation of the webinar and then we could take just a few minutes not long if anybody has some questions I did have a question for you, Elena, about the price. Okay, and I was wondering if you could give us, give people a kind of scale of price. Are there games that are free? And how expensive can they be? Well, <laughs> there, is a, there are games for, 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 for every day. There are games with a zero price. Basically, it's uh, educational games or games that are done in, uh, by, educate, uh, by United Nations and the uh, institutions like that. And basically, but when we speak about, for example, Civilization or EverQuest, uh, the games uh, or Assassin's Creed, uh, the cost would be like uh, till, till, uh, 40, uh, till 60 euros per, per, per license. But there are so many ways how you could solve this uh, issue with the money. As I said, that, for example, many, many games do better versions. When the game is ready uh, to go to launch, they do better version to test if there is a bug. Uh, and uh, basically you could uh, reach the producers and say, we would like to use it. And uh, in exchange of looking for bugs, you can use the game. This is one trick, for example, I used when I was doing my experiments uh, for my PhD research. Uh, then uh, um, there are a lot of walkthroughs, uh, as I told you, for example, with uh, Detroit being human, uh, all the game is walked through on the on YouTube, so basically you can just watch it as a movie and then discuss so would you do the same decisions, would you not? Uh, another thing is that uh, you could uh, you could buy uh, reused, I mean versions, I mean uh, like secondhand, <laughs> what I want to say. Or for example, when we speak about big entertainment um, uh, uh, games. Uh, Many of the students, they do have these games at their home, so maybe they would be uh, eager to share for you, like for a class or for a tool. Even myself, when I was preparing for this webinar, I figured out that I have Civilization <laughs> Civilization 4. I totally forgot that I was playing this game like many, many years ago. Or, for example, some, uh, uh, some schools uh, have some fund, you know, for, for some innovations, you can ask, you know, you, you, you can reach your, your administ administration, you know, with this idea, or you could ask for a grant. So basically there is a, there is a variety of solutions for, for, for that. Okay, and to finish, I would like to say, what, I have one more question. There are a lot of people that have said, oh good, I'm gonna try it out. 
thank you. Uh, I'm going to go try now. And one person has asked if you know anything specific uh, intercultural for Japan. For Japan, let me think. There for sure um, for Japan. Yeah, let, let, let me think, okay? Okay. There was a game Second China about China that was had a very big success, but about Japan, I need to think. Okay. But basically, yeah, drop me, drop me a line, and uh, yeah, and I will check. Okay. I think then we're pretty much ready to close for this evening. I want to thank you, Elena. I want to thank everyone who was here. I want to remind you that on the 18th of February, a Tuesday, we will have Agnieszka Chest at 6 p.m. speaking about cross-cultural studies and their business applications with a focus on the Arab culture. I want to thank you very, very much and say, well, maybe see you soon. Goodbye. Bye, bye. Thank you very much for, for your time. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation and hope that you will you will enjoy now video games more than before and you will try them in your in your practice. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye.